Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are trying to make their way through a strange valley filled with weird, poisonous plants. Suddenly, Happy trips and falls. <laughs> Commander, something's got my foot. It's the vines. They're drawing tight like rope. They're winding around me, too. I can't get them untangled. Maybe we can cut them loose. Yeah. It's grabbed my arm. I can't move. And the leaves. The leaves have got suckers on them. Hap, we've got to get loose. These vines are man-eaters. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Valley of Dread. <laughs> Hi, Space Patrollers, you hear that? That's the Martian Mauler, the inter-universal boxing champ from Mars. He's practicing his Sunday punch. Superpower? Man, he's got it. Wow, that's the Terra State All-Star halfback, kicking that ball right over the goalpost of Terra City Stadium. Superpower? He's got it, too. The gang, the pack a Sunday punch like the Mauler. The kick a ball for extra punch like a football star, it takes lots of training and practicing. But one thing for sure, they both had their bite-sized checks today. Now, how about you? Did you start off your day with a big bowl full of rice checks or wheat checks? Delicious? Mmm, mmm. Terrific tasting? You bet. Right down to the very last crisp bite. And no other cereal, flaked or plucked, gives you so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. Yes, sir, gang. You're right up there on the ball, ready for anything when you start off your day with rice checks or wheat checks. So for a super-powered punch like this, and a super-powered kick like this, start your day the bite-sized checks way. Rice checks, wheat checks. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Valley of Dread. Far out beyond the orbit of Pluto, a giant Space Patrol construction ship hovers in space. Scores of engineers and skilled workmen in spacesuits swarm over a nearby object that appears to be a meteor. As they work with grim haste, a Space Patrol officer inside the construction ship tensely watches a bank of viewscope screens focused in the direction of Planet X, remote planetary stronghold of the ruthless Prince Baccarati. At this moment, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are aboard the Terra 5, rushing toward the construction ship. Now, I want to avoid any space phone contact between us and the construction ship in case Baccarati's monitoring our frequencies. So let's go over each step of our procedure so there won't be any slip-ups. Yes, sir. First, we approach the construction ship on the starboard side, and that's where the dummy meteor is. Right. At three, a thermal light flashes from the construction ship. We leave the Terra 5 in our spacesuit, get back to the meteor, and board it. Exactly 15 minutes later, we kick on the rockets in the dummy meteor and head for Planet X. Check. Now look at this chart of Planet X. Yes, sir. Uh, here's our ultimate objective, this warning tower. And here, 200 miles to the south, is where we land. Too bad we can't plunk the meteor down closer to the tower. And there's a good reason for that. To get these aerial maps of the region around the tower, we had to send several fake meteors into that region. Baccarati might wonder why meteors had a preference for that particular section of the planet. Yeah, but none of our meteors landed, sir. They were automatically blown up after they transmitted the viewscope pictures back to the construction ship. Well, that's right, Happy. Remember this. The tower is going to relay our meteor image to Baccarati's castle on the other side of the planet. Now, what's Baccarati going to think if a meteor suddenly checks its speed and makes a gentle landing? Oh, I see. Yeah, he'll know that the spaceship inside the meteor shell. Exactly. But by landing far away from the tower, he'll be below the horizon, and he can cut on our landing rockets in time to avoid a crash. But that small amphib tank we'll be carrying in the fake meteor won't take us long to reach the tower and put it out of commission. Then we space upon our ship. They zoom in and rescue those 130 men from Baccarati's work camp east of the tower. It's our job to put that tower out of business. Otherwise, the rescue ships will be wiped out before they get near Planet X. All right, Happy. Get our spacesuits out of the locker and we'll be alongside the construction ship in three minutes. Meantime, 
time, in his huge, gaudy castle on Panadex, Prince Baccarati paces the floor and berates his chief advisor, Dr. Malengro, whose scientific knowledge is being used by the prince in his attempts to conquer the United Planets. Just look at these production figures, Malengro. We're eight spaceships behind schedule. I ordered a speed up, didn't I? Yes, Your Highness. If we are going to attack the United Planets, we got to have ships. Isn't that right? Absolutely, Your Highness. Then why don't I get ships? Tell me that. There's the last year's one. There's the shortage of material. We can't make endurium for the ships unless we have arcade. And as you know, arcade is very difficult to obtain. Excuses, excuses. I don't want excuses. I want results. Ships, weapons. I want to drive Commander Corey out of the universe. If I may remind you, Your Highness, the responsibility for obtaining arcade is in the hands of Captain Jekyll. I'm aware of that. I sent for Jekyll. He should be here shortly. But I thought he was supervising operations at the Arctic mines near the Valley of Dread. I ordered him back to the castle. Yes? Oh, that's you, Jack. I eagerly await your command, noble prince. My ship factory is complaining of the shortage of Arctic. That's uh, your responsibility, Captain Jacker. Yes, your highness, but I'm short-handed. Short-handed? You got 130 men, all trained personnel, plus several hundred natives. Only half of them are able to work. The climate in that part of the planet is very bad, Your Highness. Most of the men are down with fever. Suppose we took some other planet studies. The natives are standing up fairly well with a little encouragement from a lash. Well, then use the lash on the others. Keep driving them. Uh, yes, Your Highness. Oh, incidentally, I have an object here that might be of interest to you. Uh, one of the natives found it near the mining area. Mm. A piece of rock? Why would I be interested in that? Obviously, it's only a fragment of a meteor. That's what I thought at first. Till I turned it over. You'll notice that the opposite side is smooth and slightly curved. It uh, looks like metal. Processed metal. Exactly. We've noticed a few meteors exploding high in the atmosphere recently. This one apparently was hollow. Hollow meteor? That's impossible. This is obviously part of a constructed object. A bomb, perhaps? The Space Patrol may be bombarding your planet, Your Highness. Why would they bombard that region? I tell you what it is. This is a fragment of a robot spy. Corey's sending instruments into our atmosphere inside space meteors. He's mapping the planet. Captain Decker, there must be more of these fragments out there. Possibly, but they'd be very difficult to find. Well, then send the natives out to search the entire area. Captain, I'm going back to the Arctic mines with you. Very good, sir. My atmosphere sheep is ready. Malengo, you're in charge here while I'm gone. I'll keep in touch with you. Very well, then. Come on, Jacker. I'll show you how to get work out of those loafers of the night. Far out in space, an object that appears to be a meteor hurtles in free fall toward Panadex. But beneath the jagged surface of the object is a compact, specially designed spaceship. Cramped in the control compartment, Buzz and Happy watch the round planet loom ever larger. It seems to rush toward them at constantly increasing speed. The two space patrolmen wait tensely, watching the instrument panel as the needle creeps toward a red line on the dial. A few more seconds, Happy. Yes, sir. What's that red light that just flashed? It means that the outer surface of the ship is being heated to incandescence. Oh, constriction of the air. We're in the atmosphere of planet X. Uh-huh. By the time we cut on our retarding rockets, we'll be making quite a flash in the sky. The acceleration will be terrific, Hap. We'll probably black out, but don't worry. The landing will be automatic. Stand by to fire rockets. Standing by, sir. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Ready. Fire rockets. They're taking hold. Looks like we're going to make it. Okay, happy. Mm-hmm. Or I will be when my stomach settles back down where it belongs. Love, wasn't it? Well, I'd say it was a gentle landing for a meteor, but a rugged one for a spaceship. I'll release the aft hatch so we can get the unfed tank in. All right. Let's go back aft and get into the tank. On 
on through the dark night of Canada. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy take turns at the controls of the Amphib tank, crossing the treacherous terrain of the unknown planet. The aerial maps, pieced together from viewscope pictures, flashed by the pseudo-meteor robot spies, are of little help to the ground-crawling tank. Still, mile by mile, Buzz and Happy approach their objective, the tall warning tower that automatically relays viewscope images of trespassers in the sky over this part of Planet X. As the gray dawn grows over the Valley of Dread, an atmosphere ship flies low in ever-widening circles around the Arctic mines, where men abducted from the United Planets are forced to toil. In the ship are Prince Baccarati and his prison camp commandant, Captain Jecker. That confounded miss. I can't see a thing down there. I'll put on the infrared scanner, Your Highness. Uh, is that better? Yes, but I still can see through that vegetation. Can't you fly lower? Scan more territory from this height. But actually, I doubt that we can see those men who escaped. I want them armed and broad back. There were only three of them, Your Highness. They can't survive long in the Valley of Bread. That's exactly why I want them found. We need every able-bodied man we can find. And if they are clever and strong enough to escape, they're strong enough to work in the mine. Yes, Your Highness. I'm holding you personally responsible for their escape. If another such incident yes, occurs... Excuse me, sir. But I saw something move over there uh, on the ridge. On the ridge? Why, that's miles from the camp. They couldn't get that far in a single night. Yes, Your Highness. Large animal looking. No, no, it's a vehicle, uh, a tank. You're right. Someone has landed on the planet. I don't see how that's possible. The warning system would have detected any spaceship. You believe your own eyes, don't you? There is a tank down there, isn't there? Yes, your eyes. Right. It's an invader, and it must be destroyed. Captain, are there bombs aboard the ship? Yes, sir. Three small cosmic torpedoes. Then use them. Destroy that tank. much farther, Commander. I can see the warning tower from here. The first chance we get, work down into the valley. One of the low probe beams from that tower might pick up a moving object as large as this tank. Yes, sir. I will have to keep on the ridge for another quarter of a mile, Commander. So we'll drop two feet along here for a safe distance. Well, that's right, Hans. Huh? Hey, the ridge blew up right in front of us. Keep going, but dodge that crater. Yes, sir. There's an atmosphere ship right over us. One of Baccarati of all the rotten luck. Wow! That was close. Hold it, Ham. Hold it on the ridge. You're slipping over the edge. The dirt's giving away from under us. Matter, I can't control it. We're going over. They'll never get out of that tank alive. Excellent, Captain. Excellent. And if the crash doesn't finish them, we can count on some able assistance. From whom, Your Highness? The creatures that inhabit the Valley of Dread. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Gang, here's a report on America's ready for anything jet plane, the most heavily armed fighter interceptor in the U.S., the Air Force Scorpion F 89D, produced by Northrop Aircraft, Hawthorne, California. And in just one moment, you'll hear from Bob Love, test pilot on the Scorpion. Hear that? That's music to Bob Love. It's the roar of the Scorpion as he prepares to take it up. He snaps a salute from the cockpit. And now Bob is set once again to face the hazards of his tough and exacting job in the sky. The Scorpion kicks to the air like magic. It's a giant ship, a monster bird of the sky, weighing 20 tons, with a length of 53 feet, a wingspan of 56, and what a fighter! Giant pods on the wingtips carry a terrific barrage of rocket firepower. Speed of the Scorpion. Over 600 miles per hour. Gang, I wish you were here to see how Bob Love strides across the airfield after a grueling test flight. And just a short rest in the ready room, and he's all set to go up again. Now, for someone who depends on so much energy, it's no surprise to find that Bob Love is a rice checks and wheat checks man. Here's what he has to say about it. You know, a fella has to be in top condition to test fly a fast aircraft such as a Scorpion. And that's why I always make it a rule to 
sleep well, and eat well. So, for breakfast, I pick a cereal like Rice Chex or Wheat Chex. They're chuck full of energy and really taste good. You'll like them. Gang, pick your cereals the way Bob Love and countless other rugged test pilots do. Pick a cereal loaded with energy, loaded with flavor. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated, bite-sized form. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Valley of Dread. A system of warning towers on planet X enables Prince Baccarati to detect the approach of spaceships. However, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy succeeded in landing on the planet without detection through a dangerous space flight in a ship designed to simulate a meteor. Boarding an amphib tank carried in the ship, they headed for the warning tower to destroy it. But Baccarati, in an atmosphere ship, searching for escaped prisoners, saw the tank and ordered his assistant, Captain Jecker, to bomb it. A blast toppled the tank off a ridge and down a steep mountain into the Valley of Dread. Now, bruised and battered, Buzz and Happy are forcing their way out of the wrecked tank. Any bones broken in half? No, sir. How about you? Well, I'm able to move around. It was more than I can say for our tank. Well, this will set our schedule back several hours, Hap. It's going to take us quite a while to reach that warning tower on foot. Well, what's the shortest way? I'm sort of turned around after that spill down the mountain. Uh, across the valley. By the looks of it, it's going to be rough going. Yeah. Bring your Tomo light and the miniature spacer phone. Yeah, I've got them in my belt, sir. Here's your ray gun, Commander. Yeah. Say, how about the shock rifle? The 10 kilovolt job. It's pretty heavy for a long time. Oh. Hmm? What were you saying, Half? Uh, I, uh, I guess the shock rifle isn't so heavy after all. <laughs> well, bring it. Let's get through this valley while it's still daylight, if we can. Meantime, in Captain Checker's office of the Arctite Mine, Prince Baccarati sits at the spaceophone talking to Dr. Malengro, back at Baccarati's castle on the other side of Canada. I don't want any guesswork, Melendro. Are you sure there was a man on duty at the view scope every second? I am positive, Your Highness. There have been no spaceships sighted anywhere near the plant. All the warning towers are working perfectly. Mm. Then that tank Jekker and I destroyed must have come from one of the factories on the other side of the planet. Check immediately and see if a tank is missing. Yes, Your Highness. And order all the guards to watch for attempted breaks. We've lost three prisoners here at the mine. Most regrettable. Ah, Jacker just came in. I've got to talk to him. I'll contact you later, Malengo. Now, Captain, what is it? Your Highness, my men have captured one of the prisoners. One of the prisoners? There were three. The other two are still missing. But we'll get them, sir. Yeah. And the man who was captured, is he back on the job? He's unable to work. It's very sick. Ah, he's paying you for fools. Take me to this man. I'll make him glad to go back to you. Buzz and Happy make their way across the Valley of Dread, hacking their way through tangled vines, brushing against plants whose spore pods burst, filling the air with a choking, evil-smelling dust. But still they press on toward the tower that must be destroyed if Space Patrol ships are to land on Planet X. I don't want to spend the night in this valley, so I'll have to put on some extra effort. Suits me. Uh-oh. Is that a hallucination? Or is it an animal? If we both see it, it's no hallucination. Stand perfectly still. What did it come from? What is it? Whatever it is, it can swallow both of us in one mouthful. Jaws like an alligator. And a body like a tiger. Look at the shock rifle, I think it's going to charge. Here, sir. Here he comes. <laughs> You hit him, sir. Keep out of his way. I'll give him another blast. Wow. What a monster. And am I glad we brought that shock rifle? Let's hope he doesn't have any relatives in the neighborhood. Let's get going, Happy. Commander. Yes, Hap. How much farther do we have to go? I think we're nearly out of the valley. I can get an occasional glimpse of the tower up on top of the peak. If we keep going, we can at least get to the base of the mountain before it really gets dark. Yeah. Now, we can make it. Oh, I, 
Uh, Hat, what's the matter? Tripped over a vine. Uh, here, let me help you out. If I could just rest for a minute, sir. I know how you feel, Hat, but if we stop now, neither of us will have the energy to get going again. Yes, sir. Hey, something's got my foot, sir. The vines. Hey, Commander, they're drawing tight like ropes. Winding around me, too. I can't get them untangled. Maybe we can cut them loose. Yeah. Commander, grab my arm. The vine is winding around my arm. Hap, these vines are man-eaters. So the, the harder I pull, the tighter they get. You come through vines like this all afternoon and never grab this. It's so dark now, I can't see to get you loose. Wait till I get my atomic light. Commander, they're winding around you, too. Watch out for those leaves. They've got suckers on them. We've got to work fast. Now let's see how that vine has got you trapped. It's relaxing now, sir. It's loosening its hold. I can see now. The leaves are shriveling up in the light. The light. That's what's doing. Hey, my legs are free. These plants are active at night. The light makes them go. See, they're, they're letting go of me now when I turn the light on. Smoking rockets, that's right. Use your atomic light too, half. The beams will clear a path for us. Hey, hey, it works, sir. They're, they're drawing back and, and going limp. If you can keep up this pace, we'll be out of the valley in an hour. Hours later, at the Arctite Mine headquarters, Prince Baccarati is aroused from sleep by the persistent warning signal from the space upon receiver. Stumbling to the transmitter, he irritably turns it on, scowling at the still-sleeping Captain Jecker. This is Dr. Malengo. Yes, yes, Malengo, I know. What is it? The warning tower near the mine. It's dead. Dead? What do you mean, dead? Something must have gone wrong. It's not sending out any signals. No all clear, nothing. What? How about the other tower? Everything's all right with the towers on this side of the planet. All right, Malengo. I'll send a crew over to check the trouble. It... The escape prisoners! I beg your pardon, Your Highness. Those men that got away, they made it to the tower. And there's a space phone there. But, Your Highness, it's not powerful enough to reach any of the United Planets. I know that, but perhaps they don't know it. They'll keep sending messages. Jekyll and I can sneak up on them and grab them before they know what's happening. Jekyll, Jekyll, wake up. Get to your ship. We're blasting off for the warning tower. I found your escape prisoner. At the base of the tall warning tower, Buzz and Happy look down at the morning mist that swirl across the Valley of Dream. Occasionally, they glance up at the sky, peering expectantly for the space patrol ship they hope will soon be landing on Planet X. Couldn't they be here by now, sir? Very soon, Happy, if they heard our signal. Maybe we ought to send it again, just in case. No. By now, Bacchanati must know that the tower's out of commission. He probably figures it's a mechanical failure. If he hears any strange signal, he'll know he can expect an attack. Yeah, that's right. And our coach signal was so brief that Prince's men couldn't have heard it unless they were waiting for it. Yes, and remember, our men were waiting for it. Weak as it was, it was strong enough to reach the construction ship and the patrol squadron. Yeah. Commander, I hear a spaceship. They're coming. Yeah, not a spaceship, have they? It's an atmosphere ship. It's coming toward the tower, not the mining camp. Hey, that's right. Probably a repair crew sent by Baccarati. Keep back out of sight. Just can't figure it out, Captain. Those prisoners made no attempt to contact the space patrol. Well, maybe it was just a mechanical failure after all. Perhaps. We'll be careful. The entrance to the tower is right around the corner. All right, Happy. Uh, Your Highness, watch out. <coughs> Hold it, Baccarati. Get the other one, half. <coughs> all right, stop struggling, Baccarati, or you'll have a mighty sore arm. Stop it, Corey. I've got the other one, Commander. This isn't going to do you any good, Corey. You can't get off this planet without one of my ships, and my men can keep yours from landing. Then they'd better get busy. Hear that, Baccarati? A spaceship. Right. A space patrol squadron. They're going to pick up those 130 men you've been holding prisoner out here. My guards will never let you take them. Your space patrol men can't be dead without endangering the prisoners. Hey, right, sir. It's a risk we had to take, Happy. We counted on the suddenness of the attack to overcome resistance. I got six men guarding that camp. Your attack isn't going to accomplish a thing, Corey. Just to make sure, Baccarati, call the camp and order your men to surrender. Use this miniature space phone. Tell them you're captured. Uh, uh, all right, Commander. Go ahead, Baccarati. It's on. Prince Baccarati calling Archite Mine Headquarters. Prince Baccarati to Archite Mine Headquarters. Come in quickly. Mine Headquarters. Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, listen carefully. This is important. I have been captured by Commander Corey. Tell the rest of the guards to destroy all the prisoners immediately. Give me that space of phone. Those are my terms, Corey. 
My freedom or those captives will be destroyed. Guard, do you hear that? Yeah, I hear it, but I'm not a guard. Then who are you? Answer me, who are you? Ed Benton, one of your ex-prisoners. You overpowered all your guards and we heard the space patrol ships. Benton, this is Commander Corey. Nice work. Thanks, Commander. Same to you. You'll have all you men on the way home in a few minutes. Corey out. All right, Baccarati, let's go. Take charge of his power, Captain. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, you know, Baccarati, uh, uh, since you won't be needing your castle anymore, I've got an idea. Why don't you donate it as a home for wayward bats? <laughs> <laughs> a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Say, Space Patrollers, listen to what happened the day Jimmy Brown skipped his power breakfast. Right away, things started looking mighty black. Everything in the universe went wrong. It's School, at home, at play. And because Jimmy was so gloomy, Jimmy's dog felt gloomy, too. Yes, but listen now to what happened when Jimmy started his day with a big bite-sized Chex breakfast. A bowl full of rice Chex. And to make up for the other day, a bowl of wheat Chex, too. Right away, things started looking bright. Yes, sir, Jimmy had a swell day at home, at school, at play. And listen to Jimmy's dog. He's no gloom dog now. So, you see, Space Patrollers, the way you start off in the morning can set the pace for the rest of your day. That's why it's so important to get a good power breakfast. That means a bowl full of those checkerboard super cereals, rice checks, or wheat checks. Delicious, you bet. Crisp down to the very last bite. And no other cereal, flaked or puffed, gives you so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So, tomorrow and every morning... Start off chuck full of energy and ready for anything. Power up with the Space Patrol cereals, rice checks, or wheat checks. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are bound securely in a robot ship headed toward Terra and controlled by Prince Baccarati from his castle on Planet X. I can't move, sir. Even without that paralyzer ray, the straps would hold it. Keep struggling, Happy. Pluto Defense Squadron 12, Space Patrol to Private Cruiser NPC 307, Neptune Registry, acknowledge. That's us. He's calling this ship? We have information that Prince Baccarati is aboard. Surrender immediately. I can only get loose and reach that space aboard. Major Ryan to Baccarati, acknowledge or we'll fire. Oh. If we can only let him know that we're aboard. Keep fighting, Hap. Hey, they're firing at us. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Escape from Planet X. When Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Glenn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Ken Mayer, Bela Kovach, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! <laughs> and be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.